o'clock. In the meantime, I have a note from a juror, so I need juror 1206 to come out. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lloyd, you can step down. I thought he was already on the stand. All right. Go ahead and bring in juror 1206. Good evening. How are you doing? Nervous. Okay, um, just like I told you during voir dire, I know this is intimidating and nerve wracking, but try to relax. I just need you to tell me the truth, okay? Yes. You wrote me a note about overhearing a conversation in the common room? Yes. Was this at the hotel? Yes. All right, with as much detail as possible, tell me what you overheard. In front of everybody? Yes, ma'am. Courtroom, this is a public proceeding, ma'am, okay, so yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Your name is, again, you're juror 1206, all right? You're, no one's going to do it. I just need you okay, to tell me the so truth. I was not a part of the conversation. Okay. I was kind of in a different area of the common room, and a deputy, I'm not sure his name, um, but he Can was describe having. Describe the deputy for me. He was a man. He was a man? He you're going to need to narrow that down for me a little bit more. You got a little more detail in he was a man. <sighs> He has short hair. Well, they all have short hair. He had dark hair. Okay. Caucasian. No, yeah, yeah, Caucasian. Caucasian. Everyone. Okay, short well, hair. Well, I don't know if he was Caucasian or Latino. I'm not sure. So, but not African American. Not African American. Not Asian. Not Asian. Okay, so Caucasian. What time was this at? It was in the. I, I honestly, I, I want to say it was in the afternoon. It was definitely in the afternoon. Um, it wasn't Saturday. It had to have been Sunday because Saturday we went to the pool. Okay. So it was Sunday. Sunday and in the afternoon. Do you know if it, the sun was still out? Yeah, it was. It was daylight. I'm it trying daylight. to figure out. If no, it, I, I was understand. Was there a shift change of deputies after that? Later on in the evening. I'm not really paying. You're I not like, sure? okay. I'm not really paying attention. So but it was Sunday in the afternoon. It was definitely before dinner because my okay. daughter had came. So it was definitely before dinner. Was it one deputy? It was one deputy, one, one deputy. deputy. Okay. Go ahead, what happened? So I wasn't really 100% paying attention to the conversation because I was doing a crossword puzzle, but you know how you hear words being said in, your, in the background. And um, it was a juror asking questions. I don't know all of the questions that she was asking. I so it was she, a female sorry, juror? She, it, was, it was two jurors over there, but it was one asking the questions. Okay. So, and it was like general questions, like, oh, what if this, not about the case, but just in general life stuff. Like? Well, I'm gonna say the one that I heard. I don't know okay. all of the questions. I, like I said, I wasn't paying attention, but I, I don't know what she asked the deputy, but I heard his answer. And um, basically it was, it was something to the effect that he gave an example, like he said, well, just like if you were um, arguing with someone and then you go and get a gun and then you bring the gun back and you, you know, I, it was something, it was definitely that part I heard and he kind of explained what the law means, like you couldn't okay, be in trouble exactly for that. What exactly did he tell you? So you're arguing He didn't tell me someone? anything. No, I'm sorry. What exactly did you hear? So he said That's you're what I heard. With someone. He said that if you were arguing or fighting or, you know, like an altercation with someone and you go and get a gun and come back, that like it's kind of your fault or something like that. That's it's what, what I kind of like the person's fault. And okay. Did, did then, you ask any questions or something? I didn't say anything at that point. They kind of continued saying whatever they were saying. I, I think she might've asked another question, I don't know. But I wanna say that after, cause I remember we had to get up and go somewhere. Um, and I stopped in front of the deputy and I said, hey, you know, 
what you just said, um, it kind of ties to the case. And he was like, no, it doesn't. And I, and I, he said, what do you mean? And I said, and I told him what I heard. And I said, I'm just letting you know. So then all, that was yesterday. So then all last night, I'm sitting here thinking about it. And even now, with today, what we just talked about, it kind of, to me, it ties in to what I heard the deputy say the law was with guns. Okay. Um, as I told you before, and again, you just need to be very honest with me. I in your note, you said you thought it might bias you. But deputies don't instruct you on the law. I do. Okay, I'm the one that tells you what the law is, and I'm the one that gives you the jury instructions. But if, based on what you heard from the deputy, do you feel like you've made a decision in this case, or you're leaning one way or another? <sighs> Honestly, the... I feel like knowing, I, and I don't know, because you, like you said, you're going to instruct the law, but if, I, oh gosh, um, if, Try, if, take a deep breath. I'm sorry, I'm so Just, sorry. No, 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 you don't need to apologize. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to do as a juror, which is you overheard something that you feel pertains to this case that you were not supposed but to But he hear, said it didn't. And you told me about it. It doesn't matter what the deputy okay. said. Forget him, okay? I'm in charge. You heard something that made you feel as if it related to this case and it's caused you some concern. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to do as a juror, which is you're supposed to tell me. This, you're doing everything right. You just need to take a deep breath, relax, and tell me how it affects you as a juror and just tell me the truth. I do feel like I'm a, a little swayed. Like, okay. if the whole part we just heard about, like going to get the gun, it kind of it definitely ties into what the deputy was saying yesterday and saying it that okay. he didn't say it was the victim's fault, but he was just saying like the way I interpreted it was that it it, it escalated because a person goes and gets retrieved. Like if it was basically okay. it was saying like if you were felt like you were in harm's way, but you retreated. But then you come back for more, mm -hmm. and you go get a weapon. Like that's es that escalated it. So, okay. so if I gave you instructions that were different than what you heard from the deputy, could you put what you heard from the deputy out of your mind and follow those instructions, or is that conversa conversation still going to be playing in the back of your head? Honestly, I I, I can listen to directions, but. I can't say for sure. Like, I don't know. I, I hear you and I hear what you're saying, but sure. I can't say 100% for sure. Okay. And I'm so being honest. So it would honest. be playing in the back of your I would, A little piece of it, even though I know what you told me, but I know right. if someone goes and leaves and come back, you know. All right. So now let me ask you a couple more questions. The juror with whom the deputy was speaking, um, can you tell me which juror it is? She says there. The one in the very first seat? That one there. That first seat right there? Right there. In the back? Yeah. Okay. And again, she was asking a lot of general, like, questions about, well, what, then she went on and say, like, well, what if I had a gun and I, if I have a license to carry it and I'm out? The general, okay, okay. Yeah, the general question she was asking, was it about guns or was it just about a bunch of different things? I See, I don't remember the full conversation. I only honed in on that piece because I guess I got stuck on a, a clue on a crossword so then I was paying attention to what was being said behind me. Okay. But I know after that question I and as we because we then walked out and I, I want to say she went to the by because I remember seeing her sitting in a chair by where we go take make the phone calls and we went to walk on the elevator and she was asking more questions like well what if I bring a gun into the courthouse but I have a license to carry it and he was like well you can't have that she said well what if I have a gun and I bring it into the hotel um, but I have a license and I'm not bringing it into the to the um, courthouse am I allowed to do that and, and I want to say and I don't know if the gentleman who was in the room was a part of the conversation but it was another juror and okay, there by who was the other juror that was in the room do you know oh gosh it's a guy okay um, not the I think he's sitting over here somewhere. 
Okay, give me a physical description of the site. He's the, well, we, there's two African Americans. He's the lighter skinned one. And I'm not saying that he was literally listening to the conversation. I just remember him being in the room. And maybe he walked out because, again, this was behind me. Is he sort of in the middle up here? Well, there's, there's only two African Americans, and one is darker and shorter. He's the taller and lighter one. I haven't paid that much attention, I'm but sorry. I will now. So I, I'm, I'm just saying where... I want to say he's sitting over here you somewhere. You think he's sitting right there? I, I, I think... Okay. He's sitting over here somewhere. All right. I think so. Anything else you remember about what happened? No, that, that was pretty much I went to the deputy and I told him, and I said, I'm just letting you know. And, you know, then in the hotel room, I'm sitting and thinking about it. And this morning, before I wrote the note, I kind of hesitated because I don't want to jeopardize anything, but I don't want to be impartial. You did, did exactly what you're supposed to do. Um, State, you have any additional questions? No, ma'am. Defense. All right, ma'am, I'm going to send you back. See, the ordeal is over. You can go back into the jury room. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, send me um, juror 261, please. She's first one in the seat right there. Good evening. Hi. It's been a long day, hasn't it? Yes. Okay. Um, let me tell you again what I told you all during voir dire. The only mistake a juror can make is in not telling us the, the truth about everything, okay? So I'm going to ask you some questions, and all I need you to do is tell me the truth, all right? Okay. Were you in the common room on Sunday in the afternoon with a deputy and two other jurors? Do you know what time of day? Sometime in the afternoon, but before dinner. I could have been, I'm not sure. Okay. Did you have a conversation with one of the deputy sheriffs um, about a variety of things? It's possible. Okay. Did you ask the deputy some questions about gun laws in the state of Florida? Yes. Okay. Can you please tell me the questions that you asked? First of all, do you know the name of the deputy you were talking to? Honestly, I've asked a couple of them. Um, none of it was related to the case, though. It was all just information that I was curious about, totally off topic, because I have applied for a concealed carry. Okay. And I wasn't totally sure what I am and I'm not allowed to do. All right. Um, uh, so I'm sorry. Most of the questions, though, I believe at that particular moment were where I where I am allowed to carry. Okay, so you were asking the deputy about carrying concealed firearms. Mm -hmm. And can you at least, dis if you don't know the deputy's name, can you describe the deputy you were talking to? I'm trying to remember who it was. I believe it was a male. Okay. Um, I honestly don't remember exactly who it was. I'm sorry. All right. Did you remember having a conversation with the deputy about confrontations and people bringing guns to confrontations, anything like that? Yes. Okay, what was that conversation? Um, I believe that, I don't remember exactly how it came up. There, was, there were other jurors involved in that conversation. That answer was not a direct answer to a question I had asked. It was uh, in response to a comment some, somebody else had made. And he was, it was about uh, stand your ground or whatever the home version of stand your ground is. Okay. Um, where he was saying that if you're in a situation, you're fine. If you leave that situation because you feel unsafe mm -hmm. to get a firearm and then you put yourself back into that situation, where you feel unsafe, then that doesn't qualify as stand your ground or whatever the homestead one is. 
because you already got yourself out of that dangerous situation and then you chose to put yourself back into it. Okay. Is there anything about that answer that um, you felt related to this case? No, ma'am. Is there anything about that answer that influenced you in any way about this case? No, ma'am. Do you understand that the person who instructs you on the law in this case is not a deputy but me? I do now. Okay. And that I'm the one that's going to tell you what law you have to follow? Yes, ma'am. And that you... I wasn't this specific with you all, so you haven't violated any instruction I gave you, but you can't talk to deputies about guns while you're in this case. You can talk to them about the weather, the playoffs for the World Series, if you like that type of things, football. Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't know. Whatever interests you, you can't talk to them about guns. Yes, okay. ma'am. Now, you said there were some others, so do you feel as if you've been compromised in any way as a juror, in your impartiality as a juror by these conversations? No, ma'am. Um, you said there were other jurors involved. Who was involved? Do you remember? There was another gentleman in that conversation, but again, I do not remember exactly who it was. Okay. You're not sure? Yeah. Um, I believe it was the uh, older Caucasian gentleman or one of the two African-American men. But I do not remember which one. It could have been both of them All right. throughout it, honestly. Well, you said you had more than one conversation with deputies. So about the um, concealed About care. that particular subject, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, Did you have a conversation with any other deputies about carrying a concealed weapon? I don't think so. I know I spoke with one deputy about gun ranges in general. About gun ranges? Yes, ma'am. And that was on the first the first day. And what can you just tell me what that conversation was? Uh, she was telling me about one range that she's gone to. I was talking about another one and just how nice that range is. Okay. See, that that's an innocuous conversation that you can have. Okay. Was there another juror present at that one? Is that what you're, what's confusing you? No. All right, no, so ma'am. You said that... There were jurors present. It was either the African American gentleman or the Caucasian gentleman. Yes, at that point in time, I believe there were a handful of us in okay. the room, um, but nobody else was involved in that conversation except for him. All right. Can you remember any other conversations you've had with the deputies? I'm not talking about things like no. football, baseball. You know, the weather, whether no. the pool was nice. Just the that com those two conversations. I mean, I've asked. <laughs> I've asked a couple deputies about different things on their belts, um, oh, but yeah. nothing yeah, I don't care nothing that. that I feel. Okay. All right. Any questions from State? Thanks. No. All right. Thank you, ma'am. If you'll return to the jury room, that'd be great. Thank you. 15 How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Fine. It's been a long, long yeah. day, I know. So I'm going to try and, and not make this too long. Um, we just need to ask, I just need to ask you a few questions. You just need to tell me the truth, okay? This is not, I, I know this is uncomfortable, but you just need to tell me the truth. Do you recall on Sunday afternoon being involved in a conversation with one of the deputies and another juror? the juror that just went back into the jury room in, about, the, in um, the common room about concealed weapons permits or guns yes yes I okay do. all right we couldn't figure out who the third juror was yeah. we took a guess based on the description so can, tell me what you remember about that conversation i was pretty much just a standby okay. she was asking him questions about concealments and the laws 
All right. What do you remember hearing, if anything? Uh, where could she carry, where, where you can carry a concealed weapon legally? Like schools, restaurants, public buildings, government buildings, okay. the courthouse, and different places like that. And do you remember the deputy giving her any responses? He would pretty much like what I would do. I'm not telling you what you can do or what the law is, but what I would do. And what did he say he would do? In certain situations, what situation did he say he wouldn't or would? Let me think there. Let me think. That he would carry. Was it a restaurant that had liquor? That he would, but he wouldn't say anything. Oh, it was a um, it was a one second. It was um, like a business. Okay, like a business. Some businesses allow people to carry, and some business. Oh. Oh, hold on, let me go back. In some states, it's legal to carry. Uh huh. But business can say no. Okay. Okay. A business can say no. But legally, it's legal to carry in the state, but the business will probably ask you not to carry. The, they, he said they will probably ask you to leave. If you don't leave, then they can call the police on you. Anything else you remember the deputy saying about what the law was, what you could and couldn't do? He will basically, basically he said he, he ain't saying the law, but he's saying what he would do. Okay. Right. He said he would, I think. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I think he said he would and not tell nobody. And she was just saying that she may pretty much tell, say something if she wouldn't feel comfortable and pretty much. Okay. And like, do it but not say nothing, or pretty much that. If like a, like a business that don't it don't want it, but it was in a carry, but it was a state like Florida that was legally to carry, pretty much. Were you part of the whole conversation, or were you just kind of hanging out? I might have commented on something once or twice, but no, I wasn't started. I wasn't started the conversation, okay. but I was talking to him about cars and different <laughs> stuff. And she came you up were and started. talking about cars? Yeah, me and him were talking about cars. Okay. And was, she came up and started asking the question about guns. Okay. Yeah. Was there anything about that conversation that um, would influence you in any way in making a decision in this case? No, not at all. Do you understand that the only person who can tell you what the law is in this case is me? Yes. Okay. Do you have any doubt about your ability to be impartial as a juror in this case based on that conversation? or any other conversation you've had with the deputies. No doubt. All right. If you'll stick to talking about cars and not guns, I would really appreciate it, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, State, you have any questions? Ma'am. Defense? Uh, All right, thank you, sir. You can return to the jury room. All right, thank you. Okay, so. Based on the conversation with these three jurors, juror 1206 is indicating to the court that she does feel as if the conversation has influenced her ability to be impartial and to listen to the law as I instruct her in this case. Anyone objecting to her being struck? State? No, ma'am. Defense? Okay, and what, what is the grounds for you being opposed to this? She, she just said she was incapable of being partial. What, I'm, I'm intrigued by what you just said. I gave you all an opportunity to ask questions and you indicated you didn't want to and now you're saying you want to rehabilitate. You asked us question for the second juror. No, I, I asked if you wanted to ask the first one questions. I'll bring her back out. If you didn't hear me, I'll bring her back out and let you ask her questions. Would you like to do that? All right, can we have juror 1206 back out, please? Thanks. Hi, 
Welcome back. I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Schwartz wanted to ask you some questions and he forgot. So relax, take a deep breath. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Schwartz. Ma'am, so do you understand that at the end of this case, the judge is going to read instructions to the jury? Yes, I remember hearing that. And do you understand that the instructions she reads you are instructions on what the law is? Yeah, I, I can comprehend that, yeah. So she will give you the detailed description of what the law is for you and every other juror to follow. Oh, okay. And so based upon that, your decision is supposed to be focused on the evidence that you've heard here and applying the law that the judge tells you. Do you believe you're capable of doing that? It could be possible. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that I can't follow directions. I'm not saying that, but me being human, knowing that, I, I guess I'm me being human. I just know what I heard. So yes, I can follow directions. And someone tells me, yeah, do, do this, and you should only consider this. But I am human, so I I know. I'm just saying, I don't think that I could be 100% impartial. I, I, I can try, but I think a little piece of me will be thinking like, hey, well, the whole going to get a gun thing is what escalated everything, and I don't want to... I don't want to be having uh, already uh, something in my mind, even though I know what I'm told, hey, don't think about that, don't take that into consideration. Well, before you came to court, before this trial started, before you were sitting there, surely you've heard people talk about guns throughout the course of your life. Yeah. And surely you've heard people talk about various situations that come up involving guns. I really don't talk to people. We don't, like, I don't sit and have conversations about I, guns, I and we don't... I understand that, but of, I, of course, throughout the course of your life, you've turned on the television, you've seen people talking about guns. Crime shows, crime shows, stuff like that. Whatever it is, and surely you've heard conversations in which people have talked about all sorts of instances where guns have been involved. That's fair, Sasha, yeah. So what's the difference between every other instance in which you've heard people talk about guns in the past, which surely had some influence on you, and this incident from a couple of days ago in which you're saying might affect what you're thinking? It was yesterday. Okay. And what I heard was if a person goes and was having an altercation and they leave, go retreat and go get a weapon and bring it back, then whatever, it's like, it's, I'm not going to say it's the victim's fault, but that attributed to the escalation. So now today I'm hearing what had happened. And even though I did hear it high level in the opening statements, now I'm hearing it in detail and it's exactly what I heard yesterday. And you, you do understand you are going to hear from the judge the detailed description of what the law is and exactly what you are supposed to do as a juror. I understand that. And once you hear that, you're explaining what the law is, and we're telling you now whatever the deputy told you is well, he irrelevant. didn't tell me anything. He whatever didn't tell me. Whatever you overheard from the deputy is completely irrelevant. You've heard that from the judge. We're telling you now. There's nothing that the deputy said that has any bearing on what the law actually is. For all we know, he was completely wrong in what he said. So you're saying he was wrong? I'm telling you that for your purposes, if we were to tell you what he said is completely wrong, you understand that all you have to follow is what the judge is going to tell you at the conclusion of the case. I, 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 I guess, I'm, I'm, I guess. I understand what you're saying, I really do. I just don't want to, I don't want to say yes, and then a few days later, and this, what happens then? I understand what you're saying. 
I do, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you how I feel. Like, if you, I understand that I should take the instruction from the judge. I do understand that. And I should disregard what the deputy said, and I'll try to do that. And it's, it is your obligation as a juror to take what the judge says as the law and apply that and nothing else. Okay. Okay. No other questions, Judge? No, no. I have a question. What does okay mean? Does it mean that you can do it or you can't? And ma'am, honestly, it doesn't matter what your answer is as long as your answer is the truth. Well, I said the so, truth and he's still asking me. I said okay. the truth. Well, now you're talking to me now, all right? So... If I tell you, let's let's pretend that I gave you an instruction that said that everything that the deputy told you was wrong, okay? I, I, we haven't finished the trial. I don't know what the instructions are going to be because I have to wait and see what the rest of the witnesses say, all right? Mm -hmm. So, but assume that I gave you an instruction that indicated to you that what you heard from the deputy was not correct. Would the de what the deputy said still influence you, or could you put it out of your mind and follow the instruction I'm giving you? That's the, that, is, that is really what the question is. And <clears throat> there is a high probability that I could do that. There's a high probability. That you could do it? I could do it. Okay, and if you couldn't do it, would you tell us? Would I be allowed to tell you? I'm um, just to answer my question. <clears throat> Would I get in trouble? No, ma'am, you're not in trouble now. <laughs> you're not getting in trouble. I mean, the whole point of juries is, is to make sure they can be fair and impartial and follow the law. And that's, that's why I told. That's the point of it. So when a juror, something happens and a juror can't do that and they tell me, that isn't a juror getting in trouble. That's a juror following the law, which is telling me that they can't be impartial. If you can be impartial and you can follow my instructions and forget what the deputy said, you're good to go. I just need to know what you're in. I don't care which one it is. <laughs> There's a high probability that I could, but I, it's, it just ties in so well to what okay. was discussed. All right. Thank you very much. You're free to go, ma'am. Just head back to the jury room. <laughs>